Welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, the show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs use human design to shift from hustle to flow without sacrificing results. Come here to become an unshakable human and build an unshakable business according to your human design. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. Hello and welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you guys today. We are going to talk about one of my favorite topics to dive into with human design and business, and it is attracting dream clients with human design. Now, most people, like you hear this talked about a lot. I'm not going to act like this is something brand new, but I will tell you that the way that I teach this and the way that I talk about this is very, very different than the way that I see it spoken about in other areas and corners of this industry. So when I see people talk about human design, I see them talk about type, I see them talk about a lot of other aspects of the design. And I'm going to talk to you and explain to you how I look at it, how I'm going to look at one element of the authority matrix, which is my eight element framework that I teach within my business by design mentorship. And I'm going to dive into one specific piece of this. Now, I should say that the way that I look at client attraction is the second pillar in my soul strategy framework. Building a genius brand, diving into your unique gifts, your unique activations, which is the authority matrix, going into each of the activations in the authority matrix and then lifting them up. But each element serves a different purpose. So each element in the authority matrix, it's not just these things are important, it's these things are important and there's a certain way based on the placement of that particular gate or that particular element that gives it its specific flavor. So meaning gate 64 for me is my conscious son. You've all heard me talk about it probably a million times on here. You might have gate 64 as well, but it might be your mercury gate. So that expression for you and for me is going to be different. The way that we dive into gate 64 for you would be different in the work that I do around gate 64 and what it's here to do in my life and in the lives of the people that I touch. So we're going to dive into one element of the authority matrix today on the show. We're not going to go into all of it. If you want to go through all of it and my whole genius brand authority matrix framework please join the Authority Accelerator Masterclass. It's totally free. It is a five-part masterclass. And all you have to do is DM me the word masterclass on Instagram. I'm at Nicole Lano official or go to nicolelano.com forward slash masterclass and we can register you there on the website. Either one is fine. You can choose your platform. All goes to the same place, but I would love for you to join us. This is the most value-packed thing that I do for free besides this podcast, but it's taking you through my entire what I call the soul strategy framework. So I'm taking you through the human design pieces and I'm taking you through the business pieces. What does it take to really build a business by design that is successful and sustainable? I should add to that. What does it take to build a profitable business by design? And that's what my soul strategy framework is about. It's not just all the soul work, which is wonderful and necessary. There has to be strategy on that. But you also can't just have strategy and none of the soul because that's where things just feel icky and awful and don't really work. And you don't want to get up for work every morning. Not the way that I do. I love coming to work. I love, love, love what I do. And I'm profitable. And I have a successful business. And I have had a six-figure business, a multiple six-figure business for a long time now. And I credit human design for making it both exciting, fulfilling, sustainable, and profitable. So let's dive in to today's episode where we're going to talk about that client attraction piece. So finding your niche is not a new concept. But in traditional marketing, we focused on things like demographics. We focused on things like interests. What do they like? What do they not like? Do they like long walks on the beach? Does she wear Lululemons all day and athleisure wear? Or is she a more frame, legence sort of girl? Who is this? Does she hire a stylist? All of these things would be stuff that traditional marketers would tell you to do. And I'm not saying not to do them. We just do them in strategic messaging. I don't put this into 
the core of finding your niche. That's in the strategic crafting of your message. Now, if you've ever read a Russell Brunson book or gone through old school marketing tactics, they have you write your hero's journey. Also a worthwhile exercise, and I am not poo-pooing it at all. But that hero's journey, what can happen with a lot of people, myself included, when I first wrote mine, I found it to feel a little lackluster. I didn't feel terribly empowered by my hero's journey. I don't know if I felt much like a hero at all when I wrote it out. I looked at it and I was like, I don't know if this makes me special. I don't see what about it makes me special. Okay, I see what I went through. However, I don't think that it's necessarily making me feel super empowered and excited to go share it with anyone. Especially because a lot of people have these rags to riches, overcoming great odds stories, which can make us feel like our regular story is just not that interesting or won't get attention, might feel generic. And a lot of us, when we write our own story, we tend to write it generically. And when we were taught to write a hero's journey, it might have been where we were talking very factually about what happened. I was in this place, and then I had this difficulty. I went through this transformation. I found this thing along the way <laughs> that changed my life. I went through this transformation, and now here I am, and I want to teach you that too. That's the hero's journey, right? And it could sound really generic when it's just the milestones on the path. And I found it difficult to connect with that hero's journey. I have a lot of hero's journey stories that I could tell. I have a lot of overcoming things. I have a lot of change stories. But what's the essence of the story? What am I really trying to connect with? That was the part that was always missing for me when I tried to do that hero's journey work. Because what they teach you is when you know your hero's journey, then you find other people who want that transformation and then you sell it to them. And there's your niche. And now you dig into figuring out everything about your niche. Go dig through their trash and see, do they like whole milk or skim? That's the type of stuff that we were taught to do before. And you do want to know your person really, really well. You want to know what they want. You want to know what their problems are. You want to know what their deepest desires are. But that, to me, like I said, that's strategic messaging. And again, when people write that stuff out, I see inside my program, people go through strategic messaging in my Business by Design mentorship, and they're describing the problems that their people have and if they do something similar or even in the same realm of somebody else in the program, a lot of times we see the same items come up. So how do we differentiate ourselves when the problem is the same, when the way we solve it is sort of the same, but we're maybe serving slightly different people? Maybe it's the same, like entrepreneurs are a big bucket. You might all serve entrepreneurs, but which ones are you uniquely qualified to serve? That to me is where the cosmic element of niching comes in. Finding your niche, finding your target audience, really connecting with your soulmate client is a cosmic alignment more so than a strategic one. Once you figure out the cosmic thing, all of that strategic stuff starts to get very specific and very, very interesting. You become more interesting and you start to get a very different relationship to that niche, to the way that you speak to them, it starts to color and shape everything that you talk about and the way that you speak about everything. Because the way that we come at niching or finding your soulmate client through human design, it's the whole genius brand that's informing all of it. But one part of the authority matrix helps us figure out our unique positioning of our own story. Because we all have that particular world view. We have our own particular unique experience. Now, if we take this cosmic piece, it can almost allow us to become the reader of our story where we could see the essence of what's really been happening there all along. And this element of human design that gives us this little window is called the nodes, the nodes in the design. 
And the nodes are unlike anything else in the design. They're not planets. They're not objects. They are positions. So this is more of an astrology piece, but they are positions and they give us a window into the way that we see the world and the world that we uniquely grew up in and are living in now. I always say, if you had a movie and you had the same plot line and you had the same general storyline and the same general character, but the movie's set in the jungle versus the movie being set in New York City, you've got a very different movie, even if it's the same storyline. Because if you've watched movies, there's the same plot line for so many of them, the same age old story. But we change the setting, we change the characters, we change the environment, and we get a different movie. That's what the nodes give us. We get a different movie. And they tell us what your movie is. So they are like nothing else in human design, but just like everything else in human design, it's not cut and dry with the nodes. They can be the most confusing piece for people to put together to say, oh, I get this now which is why I have a mentorship for this part of the process. The mentorship is where I get to work through this with everybody and everybody gets a, a business reading with me, a one-on-one -on -one, where we go through this and then they can come to hot seat calls and to other calls, workshops and stuff that we do together where we workshop these elements. So we get to dig into laying your experience over the gate definition. And we start to figure out how this all ties together. So for example, one of my nodes is the gate of innocence. When I heard that, I was like, I don't know how. <laughs> so my movie is set in innocence. Hmm. What does that really mean? I don't know how that helps me was initially my first thought. I don't know how that helps me. I don't know how that shapes me. I don't really get it. But then when I started to dig into that more and I looked at my life and I looked at the life lessons that I had and I saw how all of the aspects, so the gate of innocence, like everything in human design, there's a complexity to every single gate, every single element. And when I started to turn that rock over and I say, okay, well, what else does this mean? Okay, it's the gate of the priest and the priestess. How has that shaped my life? How has that been my world? How has that been the setting for my movie? And then I started to get really specific. Started to make sense why I really love esoteric stuff. Why I do what I do. Why I am here talking to all of you why I talk to spiritual entrepreneurs, why that is my niche. Now, again, it's not always so linear, but I assure you that took a great deal of contemplation for me to come to that realization. And it isn't even that simple. There's so much more to it when you look at the documentation I have on my ideal client, my soulmate client, and on my business and my brand, it goes so much deeper than that because that's all the other elements of my genius brand. But when I know that it allowed me to focus my efforts, not on talking to everybody, but I'm talking to a specific subset of my greater audience. It's not just entrepreneurs. These are going to be some woo people. Now, you might say, well, you teach human design. Of course, you're talking to woo people. But I found this before I started to teach human design, <laughs> when I was just learning human design on my own. And what that allowed me to do was say, I get why all of my energy wants to go to human design. I get it, because these are the people I'm meant to talk to. This is the world I'm meant to live in. This is how I'm meant to show up. This is who I'm meant to show up for. So my mind might have said, Maybe you should keep doing just the branding stuff. Maybe you should just keep doing the messaging stuff. Maybe you should just do the stuff that's clearly paying the bills right now and that has a much cleaner path for people understanding how they could profit from it. You might lose a lot of money if you go purely human design. All of those questions came up. All of that. I might not have taken the step. I might not have gone all in on human design if I hadn't known that and trusted that somehow by taking that step, committing to my design to this element and surrendering to it and letting it do its thing, letting me do my thing to that particular group, 
it allowed me to take a step with greater confidence, with greater certainty, not knowing how it would all, all work out, not that certainty. I can forecast that this is all going to work. Not at all. No idea. All I did was say, I surrender to the fact that this is where my energy wants to go. My strategy and authority is leading me here. And anything that my mind is kicking up, this gave me even more confirmation to say, no, I think this is the way. I think this is what I meant to do. I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust my design. I'm going to trust my strategy and authority. And I'm just going to go. It was the best decision I ever made. My business skyrocketed after that. My business became fun and not a chore. Like I said, I am excited every single day. I have people that I know I am meant to help, that I'm meant to connect with in this life, that are finding me. And they're saying, I don't know why, but I think I need to work with you all the time. Every day, someone says to me, I think I need to work with you. Or they do, and they sign up for something. And that's powerful. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. And that's what the nodes can help you to do as well. You're going to have a different experience with it than I did. It might not be exactly the same. In fact, I can guarantee that it won't be. But you have your own relationship with it, and it'll open its own door or window for you into understanding yourself and understanding how you're here to live, who you're here to help, how you're meant to serve. All of those questions, the nodes hold some aspect of those answers. And then the genius brand fills out the rest. So if you're interested in learning all about your genius brand and everything that it takes to build a business by design according to my soul strategy method, all you have to do is sign up for the Authority Accelerator Masterclass. Like, duh, it's free and it's awesome. People say that this masterclass has been more valuable for free than programs they paid thousands for. It's a total no-brainer. You should come. It's awesome. All you have to do is DM me <laughs> the word masterclass on Instagram or go to nicolelano.com forward slash masterclass and you can register right there on the website. I hope to see you there. Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. I hope you found it valuable as always. I appreciate you. And remember, in order to have an unshakable business, you must first become an unshakable human. So thanks for letting us help you become unshakable with human design, everyone. We'll see you next time. If you love this episode and you're a fan of the show, please show us the love on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to the show and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with other entrepreneurs on their human design journey, join our free Facebook community, Human Design for Entrepreneurs. Go to nicolelano.me forward slash podcast links to join the group, book a human design reading with me, or access our free human design resources. We'll see you there.